I've been wanting to review this TV for months, but a series of unfortunate events made that not possible. What's important though is that it is here now, and I would argue right now is exactly when we need to review this TV. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and today we're gonna unbox, set up, and get first impressions of the TCL R646. That would be the Google TV version of TCL's venerated six series TV. Now, there were some issues getting this TV in, as I mentioned before. DHL put it in their destroy pile after not being able to get it to me one day. I somehow doubt it actually got destroyed. And then there were some issues with Best Buy yanking it off its shelves, and then ultimately TCL was able to get me this review unit here. And that gets straight to the heart of what I wanna talk about with this TV. Are the slight improvements that are promised by the Google TV version worth it over the Roku TV version when Google TV itself seems to be the uh, X factor here. As you recall, we had some problems with the five series Google TV from TCL. Have those actually been resolved? We're about to find out, but before we do, we've got to dig into this thing and get it set up. Before I bust out the box knife, I want to know, do you own this TV, the TCL R646? And if so, what's your experience been like? And what's your experience like now? Leave me a comment down below so we can talk about it. And also, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button. In fact, I think we're gonna push past 900,000 subs with this video right here. And that is an important milestone on the way to a million subs, and you can help us make it happen. Thanks in advance for your consideration. All right, let's get into this TV. Okay, so time to put the legs in. We've got two different options here. I'm a big fan of having options because not everybody's media credenza is super wide. You can either go on the inside, not as stable, or the outside. Fortunately, we have space, so we're gonna use the two outside options. Hey, Magic, here we are with the back of the TV shot. There are three things I wanna point out right here. The first would be the cable management in the feet. Instead of having a hard cap, there's a new plastic tab here, which makes it easier to put cables in and take them out, but also it allows a little bit more room, so it's more practical. Also, the switch for the microphone for Google TV is located back here, so if you want it always listening, turn it on. If you never want it to listen to you unless you press the button on the remote, turn this off. And finally, four HDMI ports on the back. Two of them are labeled 4K 120. One of them happens to be the eARC port. I'm not gonna be talking about HDMI 2.1 anything anymore. I'm only gonna talk about features that are enabled by the HDMI ports, VRR, 4K 120, and ALLM, for instance. We'll talk about what this TV can and can't do a little bit later. And now the front of the TV shot, no surprises here. We've got a trim metal bezel along the bottom, virtually no bezels on the side and the top. Worth noting that on the Google TVs, you get sort of that Google home speaker grill cloth on the bottom of the TV, right where you would find the mic. There's also an LED there to let you know if the TV is listening or not. So let's turn this TV on. And as we get started with the setup, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. One is I'm not really gonna be looking for glitches in the Google TV interface during this portion of the video. Most of the issues I've heard about with Google TV or experienced myself just kind of happen as you're using the TV. And so we'll approach those things in the review. Right now, I just want to do a basic setup, kind of talk about how long this takes. Uh, and the first thing that you're going to have to do is decide if you want your TV to be a smart TV or a dumb TV. I love that Google TV gives you this option. We've talked about before, not everybody wants their TV to be smart. At least you have an option here for the TV to be dumb. We, however, are going to set it up as a smart TV. And no sooner have we gotten into that than TCL wants us to log in. I do not understand this. I don't see any value to it. But unfortunately, you don't have a choice. There is nowhere to opt out here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and much to my chagrin, I'm going to link it to my personal Gmail account, so Lord knows what kind of information is being shared between Google and TCL. Not a fan. 
Further along in the setup, you're gonna be asked if you want auto updates to be turned on or off. There is an argument for not turning them on. Uh, if there is a bad update and it causes a problem with your TV, well then you can avoid it. But I think for most people, you're gonna want to have the latest and the greatest and turning auto updates on is just kind of the easiest path. Now most of the setup happens on your phone from here. You can use the Google Home app, scan the QR code, and then just take care of everything on your phone. It'll ask you which apps you want to install. It's not all the apps available, just the most popular ones. Uh, go ahead and select the ones that you want, and then the TV is gonna go about installing those apps. Total time from start to finish was in the neighborhood of about 13 minutes until we landed on the Google TV home screen. Now let's jump into picture settings and you're gonna wanna make at least one adjustment here. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Two ways to navigate there. You can either go directly to picture settings from the main settings menu or, and this is what I would suggest, go into settings, navigate down to display and sound and first go into intelligent here. You're gonna notice that there's intelligent picture and intelligent sound. Intelligent sound is off by default, but intelligent picture has adaptive brightness turned on by default. You may want this on. It's gonna adjust the tone curve based on the ambient light in your room. For my testing purposes though, I wanna turn it off. So I did that first. Then going into picture, by default, it's going to be in low power mode, and I do not suggest anybody leave this alone. You're going to want to pick some sort of picture setting. Now, the first thing I notice here is that there is no standard. You have low power, straight to vivid, or you can go to smart HDR, which seems to sort of replace standard, except for it's going to try and take SDR content and make it look like HDR. I'll let you decide whether that's something you wanna get into, but as you all know, I'm going to start with the movie preset because it gets most of the other settings close to where I want them in the first place. From there, you can go into advanced settings and double check your brightness. Here is where I notice there are a bunch of different options that I have not seen before. Dynamic contrast, I expected. Black stretch, did not expect that. Not even exactly sure what it's gonna do or how it's gonna impact the picture, so we will be coming back to this for the full review. Dynamic brightness here is a little bit of a stretch on dynamic contrast in that it's actually going to alter the backlight intensity. This isn't just a blanket brightness setting. Further down, local contrast is set to high. This would apply to the local dimming, but below that, interestingly enough, is micro contrast, which says it optimizes contrast by adjusting individual sections of the screen's contrast. That is processing, but the degree to which it actually affects the picture, not sure. Again, we'll have to check that for the full review. Gamma is set up 2.2. For most of you, that is gonna be right where you want it. Uh, 2.1 is also popular, but also makes the TV look a little bit more washed out. Next, I'm actually gonna skip past color and clarity because all these settings are just fine. Uh, motion, however, I'm going to turn off. I already did actually, as you can see there. And I know that's the most controversial setting I'll make today. I'm not here to argue about it. That is just my typical move. Now, expert calibration is something that most of you should not touch unless you have a measurement equipment. This adjusts the two point white balance or 20 point white balance if you really wanna get deep. This is something that you need measurement tools for in order to verify your results. This is something I will do later just to see how close I can get this TV to perfection, uh, but we're not gonna mess with it right now. Again, if you want to professionally calibrate this TV, that is totally possible. All right, backing out of the advanced settings, I noticed that there is an apply all picture settings option, which I have selected but there's no guarantee that's gonna actually range beyond the apps. I can say that it does apply this to SDR and HDR for apps. That, however, does not apply to Dolby Vision. So to get the Dolby Vision mode that you want, my suggestion is that you pull open an app that supports Dolby Vision. I'm using Netflix and a title that supports Dolby Vision here. We'll get that started and pause it right now, and we'll go into the picture settings once again and we see that Dolby Vision IQ actually is what's going to be on by default. This would adjust the picture based on your ambient conditions. I prefer Dolby Vision Dark in most cases. Uh, Dolby Vision Bright is great if you're watching in a brighter room. One last thing worth mentioning with Dolby Vision is just because you've selected Dolby Vision Dark, which on a lot of TVs means that motion smoothing has been turned off, that is not the case here with this particular TV. So if you choose Dolby Vision Dark and you don't want motion clarity on, you will have to manually turn it off as I've just done here. One thing I did wanna point out, cause I think it might throw some folks off. Once you're in an HDR title, 
as we are here on YouTube, it doesn't really say that you're in HDR under the picture modes. Normally we're used to seeing, you know, HDR movie or HDR game. Here, the only indication that you're in HDR other than the HDR flag on the content itself is the lack of smart HDR, which uh, basically means that you're in HDR and so any of these are going to apply to HDR picture settings. That is anything that's HDR10 or HDR10+. One thing I did wanna make sure of is that it did indeed apply all of those picture settings from the apps to all inputs, including my HDMI input. So I've popped into my Blu-ray player here and if we go into picture settings, sure enough, the movie mode is selected. We'll just double check that it's carried everything over. Motion is turned off, good news. Now let's go ahead and force this into HDR and double check that as well. All right, so we've started the disc, we're in HDR as you can see there with the flag, we go into picture and yes, movie HDR mode. And again, the only reason we know that it's HDR is because there is no smart HDR as a picture mode option. All right, so first impressions, pretty favorable so far. No red flags as of yet either in terms of functionality or performance. We did have Netflix crash on us once, but I really think that any glitchiness with the Google TV interface is something that we're only gonna experience as we've used the TV for several days. In terms of performance, again, things are looking really good so far. I think we lucked out and got an exceptionally clean panel from TCL. Outside of a little bit of vignetting in the corners, there's no real sign of dirty screen effect that we've seen so far. Also, it seems to be really judicious about its brightness. It's not just trying to slap us in the face with brightness. So far, the brightness is judicious and the color saturation as well. In general, it looks like a really clean, classy TV. I'm more impressed right now than I remember being back when we reviewed the Roku version of this TV. So that's a great start, but we have a lot to dig into, especially some of those newer picture settings that we haven't seen before. I wanna see what they do for the picture, if any of them are helpful or if they're actually damaging. Lots to go through, can't wait to do it. Be sure to come right back here to catch the full review. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Now that this TV is readily available and looking pretty good in terms of price, you thinking about picking it up? or are you gonna wait for a 2022 model from one of the other manufacturers? Leave me a comment about that down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.